kind of understand that. And I think that's where the, the housing prices over there just kind of like skyrocketed, not only because of yeah. that, but I mean, obviously because of the value too. Um, but it, it's really crazy. So one thing I want to bring up here as well is I think you do something great that not a lot of other people with short-term rentals do. Um, and I think you actually, everybody wants to do it themselves. Okay. And like, yeah, I'm going to try and do it myself. I'm going to you know, do this, do this, or I'm going to hire somebody. I'm going to hire a property manager to do this. I'm going to hire and do one thing that I've noticed with, when I came to your event is, is that you actually set up automation systems. Okay. Yeah. And setting up automation systems where you're basically hands off the whole thing just all you do is buy the property you stay you get it ready and then you put it into your automation system uh where it goes to the three sites and uh and then if one of them books it the other ones can't it goes into a central calendar yep. and if yeah. i've seen any of this wrong please let me know <laughs> no you are you're doing good yeah yeah you're doing good. you know and, yeah you want me to explain it briefly i can yeah please do I think okay. that's where everybody's going to get the value here. It's, it's, it's this automation system that, that you're doing. Sure. Okay. So basically what we do is, all right. So people ask me all, this is an important note. There's going to be people watching this today and everybody asking this every time I talk about short term rentals, like what if there's a change in Airbnb or like, mm -hmm. what if the short term rental market gets oversaturated? What if the short term rental market evaporates? All right. So, it's a wonderful question and one I thought a lot about before I got involved, but I operate our short-term rentals like a business. I am not operating yep. it like a mom and pop, like, you know, it's just like mm -hmm. a business for me. This thing makes me money and it's important. And so I dedicate time to like systematizing it and making it a professional, repeatable, referable experience, yes. just like I do in real estate sales. So we prep our homes with nice furniture. Step one. We get professional photos. Step two, please don't skip $300 photos because you're going to like, when I think of sit, trying to not, I'm okay. So I'm thinking I'm going to save $300 on pro photos. That's literally one night, mm -hmm. like one extra night. So get the damn pro photos. Then we build out a list. Every single home or every unit gets Airbnb, Expedia, booking, uh, Airbnb, VRBO, Expedia, and Booking.com. Okay, so every mm -hmm. unit is on four places. All right, and none of—I don't have to pay to be a part of any of them. I mean, they're going to take some of my the money that I make, but I don't have to like right. pay them money per month. All right, which is cool, I think. Mm -hmm. All of those are going to blend into a multi calendar. Right? So just like you said, I can't get double booked. So if somebody books me on VRBO, it's no longer available in the other places. Right. Uh, then we prep all of our homes. We use smart lock. So we put a smart deadbolt on, <clears throat> and then we go a step further because Austin and I live. You know, Austin, me and my wife, we're four hours and ten minutes. Austin's ten minutes from me, so he's yep. four hours, fifteen minutes, or whatever. So we have smart deadbolts, and then we put what's called a passage door handle on the actual door handle on the front doors. Mm -hmm. We do that because there's no wait, there's no lock. They can't lock themselves out. Yeah. Right. So we smart lock, passage door handle. Then we go a third step further and we put a lock box, like old school lock box on there too. All right. Mm -hmm. So the multi calendar we have built out so that the multi calendar generates a code for this specific guest, sends it to them. I don't remember what it is, three hours beforehand. And that code only begins to work on that smart lock 15 minutes before their check-in. Their check-in is at 4 p.m. And it dies 15 minutes after their check-out, which is 10 a.m. Right? So we don't have to manually create codes every day. We don't have to do that. It's automatically done because we built it in the system. Yep. Right? And if there's any issue, they can call us and I don't have to worry about sending somebody over there. I can say, here's the lockbox code or here's the master code for the deadbolt, right? I don't tell them it's a master code. I say, oh, let me generate a, a backup code for you. Yep. <laughs> a backup code. Um, what else? I have built out automated messaging 
I think there's nine messages and emails, something like that, from the second somebody books throughout their entire life cycle with us until after they leave. So every mm -hmm. question they could ever have is already answered. There's a link to our house rules. Check in, check out. I'm so sorry we're not flexible on check in or checkouts because we have a professional cleaning service. You know, so the house is actually clean. And mm -hmm. so all the automated messages go on their own. We don't have to do that. Um, we have smart pricing software integrated with the multi calendar. So people are always like, do you have to update the prices every day? No, I've never updated. I don't do that at all. Smart pricing mm -hmm. does it for me and it does it based off of other houses nearby. And so mm -hmm. the next question is, well, don't you have to jack it up for the cherry festival when it's crazy? At which point I say, it's already built in because everybody else is going to get picked up, booked up faster too. Yeah. So like, is it automatically going to be increased? I don't have to do anything. Um, God, what else? We have a clean, great cleaning lady. She's the best. And uh, she has our calendar. So mm -hmm. she doesn't have to ask us when to clean. She has her own cleaning code. So I can see on the mm -hmm. log when she goes in and out of the house. Okay. She gets auto, I mean, there's no, I mean, she's just hired. She goes when somebody checks out without telling us and then she just bills our account and that's it. Gotcha. And, um, I think I covered it all there, man, but. So how many how different, we, how many different pieces of software are you using for this automation? Okay, multi calendar, smart lot, smart pricing software. The automated messages are part of the multi calendar, so that's not separate. So I guess if you include the cleaner for things, but the cleaner, it's really just three pieces of software, I think, maybe four. Not done. Pretty easy. Yeah, that's yep. awesome. And then and it is awesome. And pretty much all we have to do is yeah. like if somebody steps outside of the normal like the met the stuff that are messages and emails right so if something weird happens like say the battery died on the deadbolt is a perfect example of something which may occur yep. then that person would call us but it's really just a couple phone calls and text a week actually honestly that's awesome so mm -hmm. um andrew said what software do you use to manage your channels we kind of just answered that um, so mm -hmm. now you're sending these off to Airbnb, VRBO, and mm -hmm. what other ones? Expedia and booking.com. But honestly, booking yeah, so those are the four, but honestly, like that, I'm not like a huge fan of those two. I would, okay. I, Airbnb would be my highest priority, right? They get a lot of like black online, but still, yep. I think they, I don't know. I haven't looked. So I think plus percent of our traffic is from there. That's the highest priority for sure. Then VRBO and then expedientbooking.com are just like, why not have them for us? Okay, so what's the software that you use to actually push out your listing to um, all those all those four? Ho host away. Just look up multi-calendars and figure out the one that you like the best, yeah. But gotcha. host away is the multi-calendar that I use. Awesome. And mm -hmm. uh, so you, so when there are maintenance issues and things like that, your, does your cleaning lady tell you, or um, like for instance, a battery dies on the deadbolt, like how does that yep. all, like do you call a maintenance guy? Um, what is the procedure for that? Yeah, so this is the, the, usually the next big question is like, what happens when the house needs repaired? Like, how do you know it needs repaired? And the easy answer is a guest, either a guest is going to tell me or the cleaner is going to tell me because there's somebody there all the time. And right. so uh, this totally happens. This has happened countless times. I don't even know how many times since the first one went up and I think the first one went live uh, end of June, the second one went live July 4th, something like that. I don't even know how many times, six times. I just guess, <laughs> Close. Right. many, we just, I mean, I do this exact same thing a normal property manager would do mm -hmm. is I just call a local person who is licensed in whatever it is. So I have a favorite company that does plumbing, heating, cooling, yep. and all handyman services. They're properly licensed in Traverse City. I literally have a tab with them. Like I have an open line of credit mm -hmm. and I just call them and book it for a day that nobody's there and that's that. I mean, so, same thing any property so, manager would do. Awesome, so 
as far as the cleaning, when do they come in? Is it like a normal hotel where you check out at 11 and then the cleaning lady comes in and then you can check in at three for the next person, things like that? That's Yeah, so that's exactly what happens. So we, this is another great question that pops up a lot. Um, I think a lot of people, this is a great, this is an important area where a lot of people have a really hard time establishing and maintaining boundaries with their people. We're really clear in all of our emails and messages that like, hey, this is our checkout time. Our checkout time is 10 a.m. They get that, that's the first message they receive along with the house rules. Our check-in time is 4 p.m. It's said multiple times in the messaging before they ever get there. So yeah. we don't have a huge issue with people on this, but every once in a while, somebody will ask, you know, can I check in early or can I check out late? At which point in time I say, hey, look, like, I would love to do that. I'm so sorry, but we regularly have people, you checking out in the morning and somebody checking in at night. We only have that six hour window from 10 to four and we pay a professional cleaning company who literally like actually sanitizes and cleans yeah. the whole house. I can't eat into it. I am so sorry if it's an issue, you know, like we're probably not the place for you, but I'm, we just want to make sure we have a repeatable, incredibly clean home for you. So we can't let you stay late, but I promise it's going to be really clean when you get there. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And that's our messaging around it. You know, it's 10 and four. We're like, yep. we don't deviate at all. Yep, that's awesome. So um, the thing I actually liked about, um, so the booking, the booking.com and Expedia, the thing I like that you go yep. to those is because you get those people that don't normally go through, have never done Airbnb or a VRBO, you know? Yeah. Um, and for me, I've actually never done an Airbnb. Um, I rented oh, cool. a place. I, I've actually rented a place in Milan um, when I was there for vacation. Okay. And okay. Uh, I did it through booking.com and then I've come to find out it's actually an Airbnb. Like it's, but I did oh my gosh. you know? I, 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 yeah, it was a whole apartment, you know, I had to check in, like it was a one bedroom little, little flat or whatever, but yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah. So I, yeah. I think that's awesome. Right. We have that. We have those for that exact reason. The traffic is less, but it's not a reason to not have that. Right. It's great. Exactly. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So with that, um, you know, what is, you know, going forward, what is your plan for the future? I mean, how many do you have right now and what are you trying to get to? And are you trying to break into different markets? Yeah, totally. Okay. So when I originally started, I was looking all over the US for places that worked for this. And I just love, uh, I love Northern Michigan and I know this area really well, right? So there's yep. probably cooler spots but the numbers are great for me. And I know mm -hmm. all of North, like I've been going up there my whole life. So yep. expanding into other markets, dude, I'm totally open to it. I have, I have buddies who buy all over the place who make my portfolio, they have thousands of doors, right? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I have two short-term rentals that I own 50-50 with Austin. And then we syndicated a whole hotel. So it's a 15 unit hotel three single families on site, so that's 18 units. So that's how I got to 20. Gotcha. The goal is to have 100 units by my birthday, which is July 31st, we said this year. So I have whatever, seven, or I have six months to get 80 more, which sounds like a lot, but I have yeah. seven under contract set to close by the end of February, mm -hmm. and I should have a 26 unit under contract, I hope by the morning. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, commercial negotiations are long. We're verbally agreed. A 26 unit that I can at least make 28, maybe 29. So yeah, gotcha. that's where we're at right now and that's where we're trying to go. I did not plan, um, yeah, whoever just said they'll find me some deals, hit me up. I did not plan yeah. to be a short-term rental guy. I really want a, a shitload of apartments for anybody who's yep. willing to look for deals with me. I will bring you in, bring me all the apartments you can find. I will also look at like inns and um, non-branded hotels. I don't want anything to do with like, you know, uh, big brand hotels. That's not not my jam. Yeah. 
So that that's awesome. So the guy who said that they'll find you some deals, his name is Andrew Castine. Um, he lives up in the cool. Traverse City area, um, maybe a little bit nice. north. But he's an awesome guy. I work with him. Uh, I've worked with him a couple times, but um, he comes nice. down here every every so often. So great guy to work with. Yeah, hit me he's up, always dude. Always getting deals. So um, and then I. Uh,